Hi, so we are going to do in this particular lecture two small protozoal infections which are leishmaniasis and trypanosomiasis. So sometimes, you know, the questions are asked about which drug is used in which particular disease. So let's just uh, go through the, uh, them quickly. Not much details are asked about them. So I'll tell you what is aptly required for you, you know, at your level to uh, crack through these questions, right? So let's get started. So leishmaniasis, uh, now the, there are types of leishmaniasis. The first type is called as a visceral leishmaniasis. So what we uh, understand by a visceral leishmaniasis, uh, that the visceras are involved right here. So viscera is involved. So it is called as the visceral leishmaniasis. Maniasis. The second type is called as the mucocutaneous. So it involves the mucocutaneous parts. Right, the mucocutaneous parts, leishmaniasis. And the third one is called as the dermal leishmaniasis, which means the skin is involved. The dermal leishmaniasis. Now, uh, the treat the drugs actually are more or less the same for them. But yes, uh, if you talk about the drugs of choice, whether it's a visceral or the mucocutaneous leishmaniasis, we would need uh, more of a systemic therapy. So uh, currently, what we use are the drugs which are M4. Teresin B. We use M4 Teresin B. We use Miltifosin. We use Paromomycin. And the last resort, which is not actually much preferred in India because resistance has developed to this drug, but yes, in cases where there is still sensitivity, we can use this drug, which is called as the Sodium stebogluconate. So these are the drugs which are used for visceral or mucocutaneous leishmaniasis. Now, usually a combination of drug therapy is used. So either we can combine M4 teresin with miltifosin, or we can combine M4 teresin B with paramomycin, or we can combine miltifosin with paramomycin, and so on and so forth. And you know, wherever the combination therapy is advised, why is it advised? Because it leads to decrease in the resistance. One drug can, you know, uh, the organism can develop resistance to a particular drug, or this leads to decrease in the dosages of the individual drug. So their ADRs would be less. And when you give a combination therapy, wherever it is justified, it can even decrease the duration of treatment of the disease. So this is for these visceral log mucocutaneous leishmaniasis. Now let's say it's a dermal lesion. So what we do, the drug of choice, we can inject, you know, the short form of sodium stebogluconate is SSG. So we can inject the SSG around the lesion, around the sore or around the lesion that can be injected. If required it is serious, we can even give IV paramomycin, right? And the third is amphotericin B that can be given. Now, out of all these drugs, you know, this particular drug, which is miltifosin, it is the only drug which is available in oral form. The rest, all of the drugs are parenteral. So that's why it is more important to remember. This is one of the drugs, just one right, only drug in leishmaniasis, which can be given by the oral rule. And in India, currently, this is the drug of choice for visceral leishmaniasis. Right, so uh, along with M4 Teresin, it can be used. It's very effective drug for that reason, right? So let's do uh, M4 Teresin B. Out of these drugs, uh, you know what? I will I will not be discussing the paramomycin because it is an aminoglycoside. So you please refer to my lecture on the aminoglycosides where we have discussed about its mechanism of action. So we'll discuss the rest of the drugs. M4 Teresin B. Uh, so you can see in my lecture on the antifungal, this is an antifungal drug basically, it's primarily an antifungal drug. So and what does it do in the fungus or the fungi is that it is going to attached to the ergosterol on its cell surface. So let's say this is the structure of the 
leishmania this pink color is the ergosterol and your green color amphotericin b is going to attach here on the ergosterol so uh, ergosterol is actually a very prominent uh, you know component of the fungal cell wall but even leishmania they also have it so that's why because they have an ergosterol amphotericin b can attach to the ergosterol and then it will lead to formation of pores so it will make this porous so pores ban jayenge right so when the pores are formed you know what will happen the important structures ions etc inside they are going to leak out from these pores and this is not good for the leishmania so this is how it is exhibits its action so it is lethal for the leishmania because it attaches to the ergosterol and forms pores and everything important inside starts coming out now otherwise amphotericin b actually itself is a pretty toxic drug because uh, you know in the dose that you gave it is a very toxic drug so not very well tolerated so a formulation uh, which has been developed uh, is liposomal amphotericin b so liposomal amphotericin b this is less toxic because these liposomal preparations they directly go and attach to the reticular endothelial cells because leishmania kya hai they attack the reticular endothelial cells of the whether it's the viscera or the uh, you know that is liver or spleen and the skin they attach so they attack the reticular endothelial cells so what this liposomal amphotericin b will do it will the liposomes will carry the amphotericin b so let's say this is the liposome and inside we have amphotericin b uh, so it will carry this amphotericin b it will directly carry it to the reticulo endothelial cell so when it carries it directly fir wahan ja ke it is going to deliver this amphotericin b inside and it is going to vacate right so by this method what happens is only the drug is reaching directly to the site where the action is desired it not it's not going anywhere else so because it's a very directed approach so the toxic effects are much much less of amphotericin b but the problem with this kind of preparation is it such you know when uh, such intricacies are there so it becomes very very expensive it's quite expensive to procure so people who develop this may not be able to Uh, this kind of infection may not be able to afford it that's the only drawback with liposomal amphotericin b let's go to the second drug and this is the important drug because it is the only drug and the first drug which is oral miltiocin and what does it do it actually inhibits the cell signaling pathways you know we have signaling pathways in the cell and because of that the all the actions are performed by the cell theek hai it inhibits all those cell signaling pathways so it will inhibit the especially the lipid synthesis inside the leishmania it will actually disrupt the cell surface too so it is quite bad for the leishmania so this is how it is going to exert its effect the uh, the contraindication to the use of miltiocin is pregnancy it is a teratogenic drug so in pregnancy this is absolutely contraindicated right the third one is st uh, sodium stibogluconate now this component uh, when it is outside the body it is in a pentavalent form the valency 5 pentavalent form mein hoti hai and when it enters into the body it converts into its toxic form which is a trivalent form so this is pentavalent valency of 5 this is trivalent valency of 3 now this is quite toxic to the leishmania so when it enters into the leishmania it becomes trivalent and what will happen it generates free radicals theek hai it will generate free radicals and that is going to destroy the leishmania so it is also going to inhibit its atp or gtp synthesis sab kuch will be disrupted by sodium stibogluconate the only problem which is occurred with this drug currently is that a lot of resistance has developed in india especially 
So in India, it is not considered as a drug of first choice for visceral ischemiasis. We prefer methotrexate, and we can combine it with paramomycin and the like drugs or amphotericin B for the effect. So these are the drugs which are used for ischemiasis. The second infection is trypanosomiasis. Now trypanosomiasis is actually existing in two forms. One is called as the African. trypanosomiasis and other is called as the american trypanosomiasis because jahan pe they are more prevalent so african trypanosomiasis is also known by the name of sleeping sickness while american uh, trypanosomiasis is known by the name of chagas disease right now the african uh, disease it exists in two forms the early form when the disease in early stage and the late stage in the early stage the disease uh, is this uh, it is only limited to the blood or the lymphatics so it is called as the hemolymphatic phase blood or lymphatics may uh, it is limited the late phase means this infection spreads to the central nervous system so therefore there is a lot of dizziness and sleepiness that's why it's called as a sleeping sickness so in the late stage enters into the central nervous system so if the disease is caught in the early stage the treatment of choice for such people is suramine a drug called as suramine is a drug of choice we can have we have agar nahi tolerate we have other drugs like pentamidine pentamidine and eflor nithine while if it is a later stage suramine cannot be uh, given because they are not effective they cannot it cannot suramine and pentamidine it cannot enter into the central nervous it, it cannot cross the blood brain barrier so they cannot be used in the late stage for the late stage the drug of choice is melarsoprol that is the drug of choice for late stage because it can cross the central nervous even if lornithine is a second choice first choice is melarsoprol american uh, disease ke liye the treatment drugs are different and they are bens nidazole and nifertimox these are the two drugs just uh, used for management of american uh trypanosomiasis or chagas disease so let's see briefly what they do uh what they do suramine actually it inhibits the enzymes in the trypanosomiasis in the trypanosoma in the trypanosomal uh, trypanosomal enzymes are inhibited and therefore you know when the enzyme their metabolic machinery is going to suffer that is what suramine does pentamidine it is going to inhibit the dna replication in them ठीक है इट इज गोइंग टू इनहिबिट द डी एन ए रेप्लीकेशन एंड इट्स अ वेरी टॉक्सिक ड्रग फॉर द पैनक्रियाज एंड द लिवर इन द किडनीज एज सच इफ लॉर्निथीन इनहिबिट्स एन एंजाइम कॉल एज ऑर्निथीन डी कार्बोक्सिलेस वॉट दिस एंजाइम डज इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द सेल डिविजन it is for the cell uh, agar inhibit ho gaya then there will be no cell division melarsoprol it alters the cellular structure again of this alters the cellular structure that's the role of melarsoprol right then these two drugs bens uh, nidazole and nifertimox they have a similar mechanism of action is that they form a toxic nitro radical and this nitro radical it's generating free radicals and this will kill the trypanosome theek hai humans they still have scavengers for the free radicals so they are not much affected but these trypanosomes they don't have those scavengers of is free radicals ko beat kar sake therefore they get killed 
So these are the drugs used for management of trypanosomiasis. So this is all you should know about these drugs. So just let's quickly recapitulate what we've done till now. So the first we did uh, Leishmaniasis and in the Leishmaniasis, you know, the different forms are there. We have visceral Leishmaniasis, we can have mucocutaneous, we can have dermal Leishmaniasis. So depending on the type of Leishmaniasis, the treatment is there. The best drug for the visceral or the mucocutaneous Leishmaniasis act in India act now is Miltifosin. And this can be combined with the other drugs like Amphotericin and Paramomycin. Uh, sodium steboglucanate is not a preferred therapy now because of the resistance which has developed. So it is only used in cases where there is sensitivity, if you see. Dermal, may again you give, uh, dermally you can inject, you know, sodium steboglucanate. We can even use, you know, we have drugs like ketogonazole, which is an antifungal drug that also can be applied topically. And we can, uh, if it is really, you know, quite vast, the disease and you have to give parenteral or you know systemic therapy also you can uh, uh, give an IV paramomycin even an amphotericin B as such. So amphotericin B is actually an antifungal drug which actually damage attaches the ergosterol damage the cell membrane. Then miltifosin is important it is the only and the first first and only uh, oral drug available for leishmaniasis and it should not be given in pregnancy. Sodium steboglucanate exists in the pentavalent form, converts into a trivalent toxic form and damages the parasite. Then it's trypanosomiasis, the two types, African and American. And African, vale, they have two states, early and late. Early is still in the lymphatics and the blood, but when it enters into the central nervous system, becomes a late state of the disease, and that's why it causes a lot of dizziness or sleepiness, and the name is therefore sleeping sickness. So the drug of choice for the early disease is suramine, and drug of choice for the late disease is milarsoprol. While the drugs used for American uh, trypanosomiasis or Chagas disease are benzinidazole uh, and nifortimox. So this is all about the two uh, other protozoal infections uh, that is Leishmania and Trypanosomiasis. So uh, we meet again in the next lecture with a new topic. So till then, take care, study hard. Thank you so much.